Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on how to conduct a repeated measures ANOVA when you have a between subjects factor and within subjects factors. So in counseling research, we use repeated measures ANOVA when we deploy the same measurement, the same instrument, multiple times with the same participants. So looking at these fictitious data I have in the data view here in SPSS, you can see I have an ID variable. And I have 40 participants in this study. And let's assume this study takes place at a community mental health agency and our area of focus is anxiety. So we, have, we randomly assign these 40 participants to two levels of one independent variable. One is a is an experimental treatment for treating anxiety. So this would be the uh, treatment that we developed and want to test out. And the other would be the treatment as usual. So whatever treatment protocol the community mental health agency would use when trying to help clients that are exhibiting signs of or symptoms of anxiety. And then we have uh, a pretest. So this is given before any treatment occurs. Then we use the same measurement of anxiety six weeks later. And at the end of the treatment, which is 12 weeks after it starts, we administer the same measurement. So this is the same measurement deployed three times for the same participant. So these three values represent within subjects. The program is between subjects because you have an experimental level and the treatment as usual level. So before proceeding with repeated measures ANOVA, it's important to be aware of the assumptions. We have to have independent observations. The data must be normally distributed. And the three, in this case, the three dependent variables, or how, however many you have in your study need to be measured at the interval or ratio level, what SPSS refers to as scale. So if we look at the variable view, we can see that those three, in this case three uh, dependent variables, are all scale. And of course the program is nominal because uh, the, there's two conditions, experimental and treatment as usual, and one's not better than the other. We can't rank order them. Uh, they're both uh, simply categories. They're nominal. And of course the ID number is nominal. As part of the repeated measures ANOVA procedure, we'll also test what's called sphericity, which is an assumption of repeated measures ANOVA as well. But I'll show you how to interpret that result when we get to that point in the analysis. So let's start the procedure by going to analyze and then general linear model, and then repeated measures. And you can see in the repeated measures defined factor uh, dialog, we have to declare the number of levels. So the within subjects factor name by default is factor one, which is uh, fine for our purposes here. The number of levels would be the number of dependent variables. So that would be three. And before I add this, uh, because this does show up in the output, if you want to rename it just so it's a little more clear, I certainly can't. It doesn't affect anything. What we're really measuring here, uh, instead of factor one, more accurately, would be we're measuring the effect of time, right? You have pretest six weeks and 12 weeks. So it would be OK uh, to name this time might make it a little easier to read and interpret the results. So I'll click Add, and you can see now time with the three dependent variables is loaded in this list box. And I'll click Define down here, the bottom left. And then you can see we need to assign our dependent variables to the within subjects variables list box. And the order is important. So we know the pretest needs to be the first, and the six weeks would be the second, 
and the 12 weeks will be the third. And you can see there's also a list box for between subjects factors. In this case we just have one factor and it is program. So I'll move that over to the between subjects factor list box. Looking at the selections here on the right, I'm not going to make any changes for model or contrast, but in plots for the horizontal axis, I'm going to put the program and for separate lines, I'm going to put time. And I'm going to make sure I add this, so it's program times time here, and then continue. We don't need to make any changes for post hoc because we only have two levels of the independent variable. So there's really nothing that needs to be done here. If you had more than two levels, then you would want to have post hoc tests for program. Under save, we'll make no changes. And under options, we're going to display the means for time. And I'll put this over here. We want to compare main effects. And we do have three dependent variables there. So we're going to use uh, an adjustment. We'll use a Bonferroni adjustment here. And it's good to have the descriptives, the estimates of effect size, and of course the homogeneity tests here. I'll click continue. And now this dialog is configured for repeated measures ANOVA. So I'll click OK and let's take a look at the results. So first we had the within subjects factors and you can see there are three and we named uh, what was named factor one to time, right? So we have the pretest, uh, one is the pretest, two is the six week test, and then three is the 12 week post test. Those are our within subjects factors. And then we have a between subjects uh, factor of program, it just has two levels, experimental and treatment as usual, and you can see the sample size here is 20 for each of them. Uh, moving down a bit to the descriptive statistics, we can see to start out, uh, the experimental and treatment as usual means on our measure for anxiety, so this is the pretest, we're fairly close, 53.7 uh, and 53.55, which is what we'd expect uh, when we randomly assign participants. What we would hope for, of course, that there's, there's going to be a decrease that occurs as we move to six weeks. And in fact, you can see in the experimental group, it, uh, the mean drops to 43.5. And the treatment as usual drops as well to 49. And then for the 12 week measurement, uh, we have even more of a drop to 37.4. And the treatment as usual drops to 45.7. It's worth noting here, and we'll see it on the plot, that the post-test score, the post-test mean, at, uh, for treatment as usual, is 45, which is actually higher than the six-week measure for experimental. Uh, so that's, that's noteworthy. Then taking a look at boxes test. So we need to make sure that we have a good result here for boxes test, and you see the significance is 0 0.004, but the uh, value we're going to compare it to here is 0 0.001, so it's greater than 0 0.001. Uh, we've met that assumption. So we can assume that the observed covariance matrices of the dependent variables are equal across groups. Then moving to multivariate tests, I'm going to interpret Wilkes Lambda. You see there are four choices here, but we're going to use Wilkes Lambda. So in terms of the effect of time, we do have a statistically significant result there. And also time times program, we have a statistically significant result. We're using a, an alpha of 0 0.05. And of course, 0 0.035 is below 0 0.05. So we have significance for both time and time times program. Now taking a look at Mockley's test of sphericity. And sphericity is where the variances of the differences between all possible pairs of groups are equal. 
And what's of most interest to us here is the significance value. The alpha is 0 0.05. We want it to be greater than that to meet this assumption. And 0 0.332 is greater than 0 0.05. So we have met the assumption of sphericity. Moving down to test of within subjects factors. Again, we can assume sphericity, so we'll interpret this line, and we have significance for time and time times program. We also have a statistically significant result. So again, two statistically significant results here. Now we move down to tests of within subject contrasts, and we can see for time and time times program, uh, still both are statistically significant. Then we take a look at Levine's test of equality of error variances. So this is a test for homogeneity of variances. And for pretest, we're above 0 0.05, so we're good. And for post-test, uh, we are above 0 0.05. But for the six-week test, we are below uh, 0 0.05. So we have uh, violated the homogeneity of variances assumption here. With only uh, one result being significant and us meeting the other assumptions, this would be something that I would note. I wouldn't let it stop the analysis. Uh, we'll still interpret the results, but this is something I would note in the limitations. So now we move down to test of between subjects' effects. So we're looking at what effect did the program have, meaning experimental or treatment as usual, and the effect was statistically significant at 0 0.044, uh, close to the alpha level but still below it, and the partial eta squared, uh, this would be interpreted as 10.3 percent. So 10.3 percent of the variance in the dependent variables can be explained by program. Then moving down here we have uh, estimates and pairwise comparisons. So this is measuring time. Remember, so one was the pretest, two to six weeks, and three to 12 weeks. You can see between each pair, we have a statistically significant difference. And then moving down to the uh, multivariate test, of course, Wilkes Lamba uh, is significant. And then we move down to the profile plots. So as you look at this plot, this is a particularly useful way to understand what's happening with these data. For the experimental level of the independent variable and the treatment as usual level, we can see that for time one, which would be pretest, that they're very close to the same. And again, that's what we would expect if the participants were randomly assigned would not expect a large difference there. Uh, but look what happens for the six week, which is in green here, uh, two, and the 12 week, which is a tan line. You can see that with the green line here, the six week, the treatment as usual, you know, there was a decrease, uh, but there was a, a much greater decrease here for the experimental. And as I mentioned before, when looking at the means, you can see this value at the six-week mark for experimental is actually lower than the 12-week for the treatment as usual. Uh, but again, at the 12-week for treatment as usual, we did see a decrease again. So the treatment as usual did work. We did see a decrease in the average anxiety scores over time, but we saw a greater decrease with the experimental level of the independent variable. I hope you found this video on conducting and interpreting repeated measures de NOVA to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.